What is a Herengon? Well, it's one of two new races arriving in the new D&D adventure book, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and it's a race we've seen before, once known as the Rabbit Folk. Welcome to the Wintry Wyvern, and just a week or two ahead of the newest Dungeons & Dragons source book, we get our first look at the newly updated Herengon. Back in March of 2021, we got a first taste of some new races in Folk of the Feywild, an unearthed arcana that held four races being playtested, supposedly tied to the said mystical realm. Among these four was the Rabbit Folk, which is making its official debut in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight as the newly named Herengon. This is the first mention of the Herengon in any D&D material. They're described as the embodiment of freedom and travel. Originally Sylvan-speaking residents of the Feywild, over time they've journeyed to other planes of existence and diffused into the cultures there. Known to be naturally lucky and full of energy, they are unlikely to stay in one place for too long, wanting to wander the planescape. While the Heron God encounters found in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight book might be mean-spirited or unkind, not all rabbit folk are the same. The disposition of all Herengon, including yours if you want to play one, is shaped in part by the company they keep, learning their ideals along the way. Herengon brigands can be spotted lurking along trails and roadways, looking to ambush their victims. In the book, they'll tend towards picking on those lost or in a hurry, but will flee once they feel threatened. The most talented of Herengon are the Herengon snipers, who hide atop bluffs and behind trees for long-range support. They're very accurate with their crossbows from a great distance, which makes them difficult to pin down. The Herengon gets the benefits of flexibility given to races designed post-2020. They've got modular ability score bonuses, meaning that they can split a plus 2, plus 1 to any two different scores, or a plus 1 to three individual scores. They can speak the common tongue, plus one language, which by the lore could be Sylvan if raised in the Feywild, or something else if raised elsewhere. Herengon can be medium or small, which is totally up to you. Older D&D races that come in the small size would sometimes have less movement speed, but the Herengon is not one of those, boasting a full 30 feet per round. Now, the race description could convince you that the Herengon should be even faster, but instead of a flat movement speed boost, they express their agility in three unique race features. The first is Hair Trigger, a flat boost to your initiative equal to your proficiency bonus. This can be stacked with similar features like a Swashbuckler Rogue's Rakish Audacity as well as the Alert feat to make sure you're the first to act in any combat. The second speedy feature is Lucky Footwork. Herengon are described as blessed with a pocket of fey luck that keeps them inches away from trouble. With Lucky Footwork, you can add a four-sided die to any of your dexterity saving throws, maybe turning a failure into success. This does take a reaction to do, but it can be used as many times as you want. The last feature that speaks to their natural speed is Rabbit Hop. As a bonus action, you can jump a number of feet equal to five times your proficiency bonus, which naturally increases as you level. This jump doesn't provoke opportunity attacks, letting you escape from hair-raising scenarios. Now, this feature is a bit tricky to understand. The use of the word jump here implies it's married to the jumping rules of the player's handbook, which describes that jumping still costs movement speed and can't exceed it. So say you move 25 feet normally on your turn, and then want to jump. If your max move speed is 30 feet, the farthest you can jump is your remaining 5 feet, regardless of the total jump distance Rabbit Hop gives you. Now, the old version of Rabbit Hop in the Unearthed Arcana avoided this limitation by never mentioning the word jump, which, as we've seen, has its own set of rules. It also wasn't limited in its number of uses per rest. This version has its own issues with an inconsistent maximum 12-foot hop that was hard to visualize on gridded battle maps, so they both have their pros and cons. Regardless, Rabbit Hop isn't limited at all in its direction, meaning you could jump over chasms and tall walls alike in a single bound, uniquely useful for niche opportunities. Not to be forgotten, the remaining feature is Leperine Senses. A natural proficiency in perception is common in more bestial creatures, and for the Herengon it speaks to their keen eye, as seen to long-range attacks found in the Herengon Sniper stat block, which along with the Brigand is one of two unique NPC stat blocks found in this book. Which brings us to our next point. What sort of characters can we play with the Herengon? We've got a race that likes to go first in combat, nimbly avoids dangerous threats, and expertly slips away from enemy lines. Like the sniper stat block, my first thought is a long-range skirmisher, like an archery-based ranger. Rabbit Hop lets them escape melee threats, Hair Trigger lets them pour on the damage first right at the start, and Lucky Footwork adds to their likely already great dexterity saving throws. You might choose the Fey Wanderer subclass, which perfectly fits into a Fey Wild-focused campaign, speaking to their plane of origin, or a Horizon Walker ranger might explain why they've since left. Monks and rogues seem like a natural choice for the Herringon, being able to use their evasion feature that fully negates damage from deck saves you succeed on, partly in due thanks to lucky footwork. 
A fun thing is the rogue's reliable talent at level 11 also works with hair trigger, making initiative rolls a minimum of 14 before counting your high dexterity score. Rabbit Hop is also a great ability for any spellcaster that doesn't have Misty Step to help keep their distance. Of course, at the end of the day, since the ability score bonuses aren't tied to any specific stats, any class has a good chance of working well. The race hasn't changed much at all since its first appearance in the Unearthed Arcana. Three out of four features stayed mostly the same, with a small limitation being added to Lucky Footwork. The flavor text is mostly the same outside of more details about the Feywild. The biggest change was definitely Rabbit Hop, sacrificing that small bonus movement every turn for a bigger jump with limited uses. Overall, the Harangon adds to the collection of animal folk pickable as player characters, and for many it is more than welcomed into the family. As far as recent releases, the Harangon is plenty balanced compared to most, and likely shouldn't have any problems slotting into any fantasy setting that already allows Tabaxi, Loxodon, and the like. The Wild Beyond the Witchlight drops later this month. Thanks especially to Fry Minis, who was so generous to share his sneak peek with the rest of his watchers. Expect a breakdown of the fairy in the coming days, but until then, may your herringons always be hopping, your footwork always fey touched, and above all, stay frosty.